Okay, so now that I have your attention, um, I would just like to talk about, uh, I think it's time for us to have a serious talk about design. And when I mean design, I don't just mean graphical design, but actually all of the steps involved in creating a product. So uh, one of my favorite quotes about design is uh, one from, I guess it's from Jared Spool, I don't know, it's, it is, it's like a UX guy. Uh, for us, uh, but because this is the age of fake news and, and uh, misinformation, I don't really know if it was Steve Jobs who said it or if it was Gandhi. Uh, so let's just assume that it was Cristiano Ronaldo who said it <laughs> and move on. So um, I think this is a, a very powerful quote because it, it tells us that design is actually anything that was intended. And, and uh, this is a big difference from art. So, uh, sometimes some people mistake design for art. Uh, art serves no purpose and design do, does serve a purpose. And um, in a way, when you're compiling code, you're actually rendering that intent. So in a way, I'm sorry to say this, but you are also designing. So Cristiano was right about this. Uh, before we start, I have to tell you uh, a kind of a dark secret about myself. Um, I am not actually who I say I am. I have a mystery about myself, about my person. I am actually Robert Leo. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know who he is, he's a Portuguese, um, Portuguese singer that went to Brazil when he was um, a young person. Um, and when he when he got there, he started a very successful singing career, and uh, one of his um, hits was uh, one where he said that when he was in, in Brazil, people because he was Portuguese, people tell, tell, told him he was um, uh, Portuguese, and when he came back to Portugal, because he had uh, that little accent, everyone said that he was Brazilian. So uh, that happens to me, that also happens to me because I, I am actually a developer also, and I am a designer, so for most of my developer colleagues, I am just the designer, and for some of my uh, designer colleagues, I am that code guy, that, that, that guy that knows code. Uh, so sometimes I'm also in that middle, like uh, uh, Robert Leal. I just like saying his name. Uh, so this used to be me when I was uh, young. Uh, great fa fashion sense, I know. <laughs> don't <laughs> Please don't notice the fly that is opening. <laughs> so uh, I, I used to really, really like computers. The, 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 they were my life. And one of the things that I most liked about computers when I was young was playing GTA. Well, well not actually playing it. I, I, to this day, I'm not actually a great gamer. But I love playing with uh, the, uh, the structure of the game itself. So there were a lot of tools that allowed me to, allowed us, um, gamers to uh, customize the game so we could change the cars, uh, we could change the, the layout of the city. This was all uh, developer, uh, t tools made by uh, fans, not, not uh, actually uh, released by Rockstar. But at that time, I, I started to learn how to, this wasn't really code, but to, to learn how, how things were made uh, in, the, in the back end uh, because of this. So. Um, uh, because I, I guess because of GTA, uh, I, I went and studied uh, computer science. Um, I thought I was going to uh, to study design also, but when I got there, uh, it was just all about uh, computer science. And uh, at that time, I was really angry with <laughs> with that. But now nowadays, I, I really recognize the value of, um, of of knowing how to code and how to design. So. Sorry, uh, when I left um, when I left college, uh, this thing that we call now UI designers or or even UX everything, n none of that was really a, a, a commercial reality. So uh, uh, the only thing that was left for me was uh, uh, doing web design, of course. Uh, so uh, after uh, after you know the release of the smartphone, after the smartphone became a reality, and we all transitioned to apps, uh, design got a new meaning. And um, and I am now uh, a, a, a design manager for, for a, a team that does mainly UI uh, and UX, of course. 
So uh, one of the things that got me to do this talk was that when I talked to my fellow engineers, and I, I'm not an engineer, but my fellow engineers, uh, I noticed that they, they really like um, the, the design of their hardware of their phones. They, they discuss it a lot. They're passionate about their phones, and, and they compare each other's phones. But then the thing that they do, you know, the software, they, they don't seem that passionate about it, and, and I, I can't understand why. It, it, for them, it, it's like it's unthinkable that when um, when PlayStation, let, let's say, when PlayStation released PlayStation 4, if it looked just like PlayStation 3 but with a 4 in it, uh, for them it would be unthinkable and, and they wouldn't buy it. But I, I've seen this over and over and over again. Like they have version one of the software and they re-engineer everything uh, on the back end. Let's say they transition to Kotlin and for them it's okay to have version two just like the first one. We, in, and for me as a designer, it, that, that's weird. And uh, so first of all, let, let's just take a look uh, at how we got here. So um, I, I'm sorry, this is going to be a very long history of, of computing. Um, so graphical user interfaces uh, started really as we know it today, uh, as a side project on, on a um, experimental team at, at Xerox uh, in 73, uh, they released a, um, an experimental computer that, uh, that, has, that had, for the first time, everything that we now take for granted on desktop, which was the mouse, uh, the windows. It, 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 it was really what started it all. But because it was just an experimental uh, project, and it, um, it was really mm, shitty. Uh, and it, it wasn't commercial, so. And it had one uh, extra flaw it, that was that it really needed this cabinet to work. So this wasn't commercial, that was shitty too. Um, so up until the 80s, uh, most computer interfaces, at least um, most operating systems were just uh, text-based. Um, and then uh, Xerox, uh, they really, they, 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 they finally made a computer that uh, like their experiment, that was like their experiment, a bit more evolved, but this was commercial. But because Xerox was a photocopier company, uh, they thought that that was important in the 80s, of course, but uh, they didn't really do much marketing and it was expensive, so it was shitty, no one knew about it. Uh, then came the Apple Lisa. The Apple Lisa was was the first, uh, I'll say, the first uh, computer to really uh, take those concepts created by Xerox and apply them uh, in a very smart way. So, uh, if you, if you if you look at at, at uh, the screen there, and if you have a Mac, you'll recognize most of those elements. And this was made in the 80s, so this was really groundbreaking. Um, of course, this was very expensive, so it was shitty. Uh, they, they, they even tried it again with, with the Macintosh, which was great, it was small, it was really the personal computer for everyone, but it was expensive, so it was shitty. And then these guys came along. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just like, I, I love this video, this is my favorite video ever. So this was this was uh, when Microsoft um, was were releasing Windows 95. This wasn't their first uh, graphical user interface operating system. Let's say it like this. But this this was really a revolution, and uh, it um, for the first time the, the, we, uh, they were able to s uh, separate um, operating systems from the hardware, and this really uh, gave us a boom of um, of computers uh, in everyone's homes. And it brought us one thing that we really love to hate, which was Internet Explorer. But uh, this was really important because uh, suddenly everyone was trying to, uh, to, to make a website. They were shit, sorry. Um, and even, um, even uh, search engines were, were really, they, didn't, they wanted to be everything for everyone. And uh, they, they weren't really practical. And then, of course, Google came along. And with their simplicity, and uh, I don't know if, if it was intentional at the time, but or if it was just a cost-effective uh, measure, uh, because it, it was so simple, their UX was really that uh, so simple too. 
and it really took off. And this was at a time when, when uh, the internet was really becoming, starting to become useful uh, with sites like Amazon and eBay. And then this guy, remember to, do, to launch this? And I know this is a Google event, but you must recognize the importance of this. Um, so before, before this event, smartphones looked like this. And people thought that this, this was smart and, and, and it's really, uh, it was really hard to use this. And after, after that event, you know, people started to copy the, the iPhone, uh, but they really had one major flaw, was that they all needed this. And this was really not a good solution. So that's when Android entered the party. So um, this was the first version of Android. It was really shitty. This, this is um, every, every app. I'm going to just show you some, some examples of apps from, from that time, um, from about 2010. Um, and well, everyone from, from, from what we now know about design, uh, from uh, the design of our apps, this was really, really bad. And these were all Google products, but they still, they, and the web was an error better, but uh, those were all Google pro products, but they didn't feel like they were from Google. And they were really a mess. And the iPhone apps uh, weren't any better. Th these are Google apps, of course, and um, they don't feel like Google. Um, so to solve this problem, Google decided to release a set of guidelines to to create a brand uh, awareness and to, to create a brand image. And so, um, you know, as a, as, as a set of guidelines, it went really well. So um, their products suddenly stopped being some uh, crappy knockoffs of the iPhone. Uh, and they really got a personality on their own and they got respect for this. So uh, even, even designers started respecting Google. Um, of course, I'm sorry, you, you know this is true. <laughs> before, before material design, Google wasn't respected by the, the, the design uh, community. Um, so um, with, with every, uh, s suddenly it, was, it became recognizable what, what a uh, Google app was, either on Android or iOS. But then, well, a bit of a disaster. I know that, that most developers didn't see this as a disaster, but well, companies started seeing this as a disaster and, and, um, and users too. So because, um, because material design guidelines were so good, they, they actually uh, restricted the design of the app so much that everyone started looking at them as the Bible. You know, everything that was made, every app that was made had to follow those, gu those guidelines, which were just guidelines, not rules. Uh, Google wasn't going to um, deny any app that, that didn't use those, those guidelines. It was just guidelines. But suddenly, well, every app started looking the same. And of course, they had different colors, but you know, apps that did different things like messaging apps or file managing apps, they all looked the same. And so uh, with this in mind, Google last year released a new set of guidelines where they said, look, uh, we don't want you to be so strict. Don't think of this as a strict system. Uh, just, you know, these are the basic guidelines and you can add teams on it and, and um, you can personalize it, customize it to your company needs. So, you know, every app doesn't have to be the same. But, well, this was, this was the reaction we got from our fellow <laughs> developers. So. They started panicking. You know, everything they suddenly seemed like everything they knew about design wasn't really uh, valid anymore, and they didn't know how to quantify design, like 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 if it was something that that could be uh, measured because of of the strictness of uh, Google's uh, material guidelines, uh, the the first version. So Google Google's own implementation of these new uh, new uh, guidelines, uh, well. New apps started coming out from Google, and then, well, people started complaining that, well, they all look the same, which is, again, are we falling into the same mistake? Are we making the same mistakes again? Uh, well, this, this is actually a trend that uh, it's not exclusive to Google, it's not exclusive to Android, uh, it's actually a, a, um, 
a very big trend in, in, in UI, which is to take away everything that doesn't matter and just show the content. Uh, of course, there are some companies that do break these guidelines, you know, uh, not guidelines, this, this, uh, this trend. They, they have their own personality and they are, um, you know, they still have, well, th these are probably the most used apps in the world. They have billions of users and I, I, I am not uh, exaggerating this, they have billions of users and still, my mom can use this and this is, for me, this is amazing. Uh, yeah, my, my mom, uh, by the way, is uh, like my my test user, and if she knows how to use one thing, uh, something, well, I guess everyone knows how to use it. Sorry, mom. <laughs> uh, so, how can we how can we get away from this? Well, I think that one one the first step is of course learning the guidelines, but this is what got us into this mess in the first place. So. Actually, the, f the second step is breaking them. But the, the problem with, um, with the, the first uh, Google material guidelines was that they were so strict that everyone interpreted, interpreted them as uh, rules. And actually, um, they were just a set of, uh, of, of, uh, gui uh, of guides that, that told us uh, to, to put uh, some elements in some places and, and that, that would be recognizable for a user. And uh, that's really what, uh, what we have to do. So step three is um, including designers in the process. I, I know what you're thinking, of course. Well, uh, we have u user experience designers, we have UI designers, we have interaction designers, information architecture, content strategists, creative writers. Okay, there are some um, a lot more, but uh, let's just stay with this, stick with this. Uh, but of course, we have the product owners, we have project managers, which is cool, team leaders, and of course, the software engineers. So I guess that what I'm saying that everyone, if they have an intention to change the product or, or have an intention to, uh, or, or if they have something to do with the product, they, sh they should be in the design process, not just the designers or the stakeholders. Um, so I, I, I I, I separated the, um, the, the steps, uh, uh, the involvement of designers in projects in, in a couple of stages. So um, the first, for me the first stage is, well, if you don't have a budget, well, you're not going to have a designer uh, unless you know someone. Uh, so learn the guidelines and, um, and follow them. Blindly, okay, that's okay, that's better than nothing. Well, if you have a, if you're on a small budget, at least hire a, a freelancer to at least give you consultancy on on that on those uh, guidelines that that uh, that you're following. Uh, if you're if you're a startup, please please have a a, a full-time designer. I'm uh, I'm calling it unicorn designer because it should be able to do everything from graphic design to to UX um, and. You know, for, for small companies, a, a design team that has a, a lot of competence, that, that would be good. And for uh, big companies, well, have, have teams of designers on every product division. That would be great. Uh, the problem is that, uh, that I see now is that most companies, even big companies, are still at stage zero, and I don't know why, why this is still happening, because basically what, what, what we're, st we're still doing, most companies are still doing is, um, if if you're if you're ship on on your product on your project you're going to have a ship product so we have to think, start thinking about quality and selling quality too uh, and of course um, wh when when the users look at your app uh, they're they're seeing they're not seeing the code they 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 don't care about code they they care about the first thing that they see which is the design um, not that code is important of course we all know that it is but that's what people the regular user sees. And uh, they shouldn't be looking at this. Um, okay, so step number four should be design systems. So design systems are really a uh, method. I, I know that for developers, this, this, this is like common ground in, in if we translate this into code, which is to have um, a split every uh, design component to its bare minimal, where we have um, uh, atoms that are just like a button or a textile or a color and then scale it up uh, as, we, as we group them. 
until we have uh, the pages. I know, th uh, as I said, this 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 um, this is uh, very common in code, but in design, this wasn't the the, the, the case. So we we uh, used to work with pages, and we would just change the the the, the aspect of of the page of the final page. And if we had 100 uh, product pages, well, we had to change 100 pages. Uh, what this allows us is that if we change the uh, colors, let's say the main color of the app, that automatically triggers um, all the way down to the pages. And actually, what we're trying to do now, what, what the, the, the industry is trying to do now, is actually trigger it down to the code. And, uh, but we're going to talk about, uh, talk about that in a minute. So first, to understand how, how, how this works in our regular workflow, so there are kind of three tools, three kinds of tools for, for designers right now, uh, keeping it simple, which is uh, software for creation of the design, software for prototyping, now creating uh, prototypes, and uh, software to end off, um, end off the, our design to, to the developers. And um, one, of, one of these tools stands out, which is uh, Sketch. So Sketch has, a, has an open format and, and supports uh, uh, plugins. And, and uh, uh, some companies uh, are, are making use of that, of that to extend the design to the code. So um, when Google released th their new set of guidelines, uh, they also released uh, some tools for Sketch, where we can customize all of the elements uh, in their, um, in their uh, all the components in material design. And then we can um, submit them to Google's own Gallery I/O, where um, where they uh, where the developers can can go and check out the the, um, the specs and and the assets. Um, Airbnb uh, has a really cool a really cool concept too, which is a, a React Sketch app uh, that that allows us to uh, pick some uh, React code and convert it into an editable uh, design editable. And uh, well, the, the problem with this now is that uh, it only it only works one way. Um, Airbnb also has a, a, r a really cool um, framework which is called Lottie. Lottie allows us to um, make animations in, in After Effects and then convert them into um, into uh, animations that can be played uh, anywhere because there are players for uh, every major platform. This works a bit like uh, Flash in the old days. Uh, it's not interactive, but um, it, it's like a, a file that a vector file that we can we can play everywhere. And then there's this is the coolest thing I've seen uh, last year, which is uh, Facebook's proprietary um, design system tool. So I'm going to talk to you about a bit more in detail about this. So um, Facebook's uh, designers and developers, uh, they all, they all face these issues. And, uh, about how, how can we translate uh, code into into uh, design into code? Sorry, and and, and some way uh, same way around. So um, they, they they created a set of t uh, tools for Sketch where um, they could load real data from the app. So it was it would uh, the mocks would use real data. Um, the, all, all of this uh, design system lives in the cloud, so uh, they they can make. Uh, they can make uh, changes to it and, and commit it, just like uh, with code. And they actually did a bit more than that. They, they, they translated, that, they connected it to the real app. So they can change if they want. Uh, I, I guess, I, I suppose they have uh, some protection for that. But they can change Facebook's color, and that can be applied instantly to the app. And this is a really cool, really cool, um, really cool piece of software, I guess. <laughs> Because um, it, it it really freed uh, developers from having to change every single time. You know, every single time a designer uh, decides that okay, no, this is not our color. We, we should change this color. Okay, this uh, rounded corner is not okay. So that that eliminated that process in a way, and for uh, can be used for bug fixing. But it can also be be used for another set of uh, methods that uh, Google created. So Google suge suggests a thing they call uh, design sprints. They're, they're cool when you're starting a project, you know, so everyone can, ha can have a shared vision. When you're, when you're at a deadlock and you don't know how to, how to solve it, and you, and you get everyone involved in a solution, 
and they really mean everyone. So from from the designers to the developers, every everyone gets together to to find uh, fresh solutions to the problems, and this also allows them to have uh, user feedback from per uh, people outside of their organization, uh, and of course it allows everyone to fail. And this is very important because uh, when we're, we're dealing with live projects, of course, we can't aff can afford to fail. And besides that, it has the side effect of, of, um, of uh, team building, which is, uh, well, because everyone's working uh, in the same place, in the same room, um, well, everyone starts to get together really nicely. So uh, I'm not going to go into detail about this, but they actually suggest that we, sh uh, we should split this process in five days, uh, which is like, okay, so in day one, we're trying to understand the problem. Uh, in day two, we are, we are uh, suggesting solutions for that problem. Uh, day three, we, we decide the best solution and we, what is the best solution, and we then um, we, uh, storyboard that, that idea. On day four, uh, we create a functional prototype of, that, of this solution. And on day five, it is validated uh, with the users. Um, of course, not everyone can afford five days of stopping the team for five days. Uh, I guess this can be done in three days. This can be done in one day, whatever. I, I guess it can, be, it can be done in one hour a day. It, it just depends on, on, on if everyone's on the same page of, about solving problems from the product. Um, so in conclusion, uh, if you have anything to do with the creation of a product, well, I'm sorry to say this, but you are a designer. And really, stop focus. If you are a designer, please take that responsibility into your hands. So stop focusing on making your products work and focus on making better products. So yeah, that's my message today. So thank you. <laughs>